Hello, welcome back to my garden here in Denmark. It's the 13th of June. It's officially summer. This is a USDA Zone 7 equivalent. And oh, it has become summer. And we are now on a drought index of uh, 10 out of 10. So it is a really unusual summer. It's a really dry one. And it has, of course, affected some of the plants. They are not as full as they are supposed to be, at least not all of them. The alliums, of course, seem to like it. They are rather drought tolerant. This is Allium Globemaster that I have all over the place. It is a sterile variety. The bees really love it, but it will not set any seed and it will flower for quite a long time. At least if it wasn't as dry as it is right now. One thing that you want uh, to do with your globe masters is that you want to put them rather deep into the border because they have uh, rather uncharming leaves at uh, this point in time when they flower. So just as I've done here, you can see it's next to uh, this Roseanne and that will hide the, the, the leaves of the globe master, of the allium. In there you can see the rather ugly leaves and these are actually in a nice enough position uh, not a, any issue there only the plants are around them are rather low due to the drought but that is an unusual circumstance beauty bush that is looking really stunning right now that will become quite a lot taller should become uh, twice as tall and hide the roof of my neighbor's house. I'm looking forward to that. That will be that will be nice. As you can see, I have quite a lot of globe masters over here. On the other hand, I don't have that many over here in the newly established border. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this particular clump of globe masters that is too close to the path and I'm gonna dig them up when they have gone to ground and, uh, and it's uh, their pots only and then I will, uh, will move them, spread them around over here. Usually I plant them next to, uh, to, to, to my geranium, uh, the rose ants, because they will hide the leaves of the alliums. Down here, oh, I should have deadheaded, but I did not. Iris Siberica. This w has been looking really, really nice. Hasn't been flowering that long though, due to the drought, but it has been looking really nicely. Over here, another Iris Siberica. I will try to add the names in after this video. And that has actually flowered for quite some time now. So they, uh, they don't flower that long on the individual flower, but they have quite a lot of flowers. So they've been flowering really, really nicely. Jacob's Ladder. I can't remember what it's called, it's sterile. I think it was Hopleys or something like that. And it hasn't flopped, at least not too badly. The issue with Jacob's ladders is that they can spread, usually they can spread by seed and they will spread quite a lot. But this one is, uh, is sterile, so no issues there. This is the first year that it's in flower for me. And I really hope that they sent me the right one, because it is the sterile variety that I was going for. Down here, Geranium and Thompson. That is a nice looking geranium. Should flower for a really long time. And of course, as I told you, uh, I have this uh, Geranium Roseanne as well. Geranium Roseanne is definitely one of my favorite uh, geraniums. It will cover the ground really nicely. It behaves, it's sterile, it won't spread. It will become quite big over the years though. 
but uh, that is a good thing because I need them to hide my alliums and so on. So I really like the behavior of, uh, of, of geranium rosane, and I know many people do. It's a really popular variety. Over here, this is Geom totally tangerine. And I think this is when it looks its best. And I like it next to Nepita Walker Slow. All of my Nepitas here are Walker Slow. Some of them are rather tall, but that is because uh, the soil here is actually rather good. So they will become taller the better your soil is. So if you have sandy soil, they won't be as tall. But here I'm on, uh, I'm on. I'm actually on a quite heavy clay, but I've soil improved over the years, so the soil here is rather good, and hence the nepitas are. Some of them are, as you can see, are really tall. So this uh, walker slow is actually taller than it was supposed to be. Talking of plants that are <laughs> taller than they are supposed to be. I'm pretty sure that my mother originally purchased this one as an uh, elder called, uh, I think it's called black lace. You can see the leaves right there. But uh, black lace is supposed to be only one and a half meters tall. So it was supposed to be uh, lower than I am, but it is in fact quite a lot taller. I think that's at least five meters. Things that I got done since last time, I put in a foundation for this rather nice looking trough, since I think this will be its permanent location. It looks really, really good in there. And that's definitely the place where I want it. It wasn't level after the winter, and I hadn't put in any kind of foundation. So what I've done is I've put in some, uh, some gravel and sand, stomped it down really nicely beneath it, and hopefully that will, uh, that will secure it. I think I went down to 70 centimeters or so. That should hopefully in most winters be, uh, be totally frost free. In here, West Country series Lupin. I think it's called Masterclass. It is at its very end of the first flowers though. The second flowers are beginning to appear. You can see them in flower down here. And I will remove the spent flowers as they, uh, as they fade. The roses, oh, they are in bud soon, very soon. These will flower. I'm looking forward to that. Due to the drought, I have been, have been uh, watering some of the newly established roses. I put in some bare root roses this uh, last fall and they still need to get established. So I've been watering those so that I don't lose them, but they are still looking, uh, looking really good. You can see them there, these are the newly established roses. I think they'll look, uh, look really good. I might uh, pinch the, the tall one though. In here, you might think that it looks quite a lot like like geranium and Thompson, but in fact it isn't. This is geranium and Falkhart. You can basically tell them apart usually, and Falkhart has a bit more yellow in its leaf, but the flowers look quite uh, the same. But the behavior of the plant is quite differently. Geranium and Falkhart will weave its way through planting with really long stems. So it, it's basically weaving its way towards these ferns. You can see it down there as well. And it will continue doing so throughout the season and flower along the way. And if you want that kind of behavior and fall card is a really, really, oh yeah, and fall card is a really nice plant to put in. And the bees are just enjoying these alliums. Again, it's, it's Allium Globemaster that I have throughout here. I like that they are sterile, so they don't spread by seed. Over here, the peonies, I think they are just about to go over. They'll go over in a few days. 
they have been flowering really nicely. Unfortunately, I don't know what this variety is. Originally, I actually thought that it would be uh, Peony Bowl of Beauty, but it definitely uh, isn't that one. And they are the same. There are three uh, peonies in there and the flowers all look the same. So it isn't some kind of, uh, of mistake from, uh, from where I purchased them. It, uh, it would be my own mistake. But I can understand why I purchased this one because that is looking really good. That's a nice looking peony. Yeah, I have one, one bowl of beauty in, uh, in flower in here. I can see that now. Let's just look how that one uh, looks like that. They are actually fuller. They will open up sort of a little bit and expose the center. And I really like these bowl of beauties. I actually purchased some extra. I'll show you those at the, the end of the video. They, uh, they are showing their flowers as well and their flowers have been in flower a little bit longer than that one. Combination of Nepeta and Geranium totally tangerine. Nepeta is flopping just a little bit here, but the funny thing about these walkers low when they flop, they will reshoot from the center. So it doesn't matter that much uh, when they flop. Usually I, uh, I remove flopping flat plants, so it's lucky that it has this uh, rather well-behaved uh, way of, uh, of flopping. Yeah, in here you can see I established some new plants in there. I had a plant in there that was just spreading too much by seed and it also had that unfortunate behavior that the seedlings were really hard to, uh, to remove. So I removed the entire plant altogether and I've mulched around these newly planted uh, plants to keep in the moisture. So hopefully that will keep in the moisture and allow these plants uh, a good start in life. And I am mulching. Basically, I skipped on the mulch in spring and now I've regretted it due to this drought. So I purchased quite a lot of mulch. And as you can see throughout this border in here, whenever I put something new in, these are some newly established uh, rosans. I mulch around them, and that's just to keep the water in. There isn't a hose ban on, so I, I'm allowed to, uh, to water as much as I like, but I would like to water as sparingly as I can. Oh, another nice looking plant. This is a willow. I think it's called a creeping willow. And I like that next to, uh, next to this. Yeah, I call it the pond, but it is really, really small for a pond, right? And as you can see, just behind it, you can see this uh, copper rose that is on its way. That will become really tall. That should become quite a, a tall plant, perhaps three meters tall. And also behind those, I also have some Joe Pie weed on the way. They were established last year. I don't think that they will, uh, will poke up over the, these plants yet though, but in the long run, next year they should. So I am trying to uh, do a staggered uh, planting in here so that I'm able to see the plants that are at the back. Let's just take a panorama view of uh, how it looks from up here. Even though there's a drought on, it still looks really nicely. But I am hoping that this drought will, will end soon. Nifofias, I'm not sure what variety. But they are looking good. Foxglove, also looking good. Foxgloves are biannuals, so they will seed and they will appear the first leaves, uh, the first year with only leaves, and the second year they go into flower, and then they uh, usually die. Sometimes you get a third year, but not very often. A dogwood, it's Miss Satomi starting to flower. That's going to look 
really, really, really well in a week or so. Then it will be in full flower. Over here, a geranium and Thompson, coupled with a West Country series lupin. And Iris Siberica. Yet another Iris Siberica. I'll try to put in the name for this one as well. That has been looking stunning. It, it looked really stunning about a week ago or so. Oh, and more. These are also, yeah, these are also uh, Bowl of Beauty coming into flower, and that's definitely a Bowl of Beauty. And quite a lot of bees in here. Finally, the bees have appeared. Uh, most of these are honey bees, so and of course they have a beekeeper that will help them throughout the year. We had a really at the very beginning of spring it was actually rather hot and then it became really cold and damp and unfortunately I think uh, most of the bumblebees appeared then and they have had a really hard time finding resources I think and perhaps also not being able to fly due to uh, that weather. And now when they are finally out we have this really hot drought but there aren't as many bumblebees yet this year as there usually is at this point in time. And the same goes with the, with the butterflies. Oh, one thing that I would like to show you. When new housing is established here in Denmark, they'll put in quite a lot of sand. And as you can see right here, the ones that uh, put up this house also put in the lawn. And the sand goes out to this line that you can see right here. So basically some of my lawn they planted in sand. Yeah, that's not a, a good thing to do, but luckily this area will be transformed into a terrace in a couple of years. So that doesn't matter that much. One more thing that I would like to show you though, and yeah, not the, 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 the bag of mulch. I still have some mulch left. I'm gonna use that. The problem when you try to establish a meadow is usually that your soil is too good so it will become uh, it will become covered with grass instead of becoming a meadow as you would like it but since they put in so much sand around the house and especially here in this location I decided to remove that lawn because a lawn in sand will will never work it, it will become too dry here uh, every year it will uh, it was uh, too dry so what I did instead was that I removed the lawn and I mixed in some soil into this uh, the sanded area and uh, just look at it now and then I I purchased a, a meadow mix it's a mix of perennials and native plants I cannot rem uh, re recommend you to plant exactly the same because some of the plants here in Denmark might be invasive in other countries but just look at that the yellow ones is a is a Danish plant it's looking really well. It actually supports one of our butterflies. We have a very small blue butterfly and this uh, this supports that plant. And of course the lupins, that's, that's, that's for me strictly because those aren't uh, native. But this looks really good. And there is quite a lot of bees in it. Quite a lot of bees. Oh yeah, and just behind it you can see there's a mess, but I think I'm gonna put in a parking space for my trailer. So that's, uh, that's going to be changed probably in a year or so. And of course that sand ran along the entire house. One more thing that I would like to show you. As you remember, I don't have a kitchen garden this year, if you've watched this channel before. but. I did have one a couple of years ago and what I created here also a couple of years ago is uh, it's this is a Rio net that I have uh, rolled up. I had help from my neighbor rolling this because when you roll it up you don't want it to uh, to swerve back into your face. Uh, it can take your eye out so 
take a little bit of care there. I, I use glasses, so I'm not uh, that worried. But, but take a lot of care if you decide to do that. But this is basically a reunit, one that will, uh, that will rust and has done so. I like the colors of it. I rolled it up initially and I s initially I secured it with uh, plastic strips. I uh, felt that the plastic strips did look uh, rather ugly. So what I did instead was I ended up bending uh, these so that they are kept in place. And that works out. It's, uh, it's really a stable construct. And what I use it for is uh, I grow uh, peas and beans of it. I have uh, tall, usually I have uh, tall beans and tall... Uh, so these will support these plants. And these are really sturdy constructs. I got that idea from my mother and I don't know who <laughs> she stole it from. But it, it actually works out really nicely. The only thing is you should you shouldn't uh, cut too much on the quality though, because on some real nets, these are not uh, fixed so well together in the joints. But this real net is really, really nice in the joints as well. So check on that before you, uh, you purchase it. And I did cut them down a little bit. Uh, they are almost as tall as I am. And the peas and beans will actually flop a little bit over the top. So perhaps I did cut them back a little bit too much but it doesn't matter, it's, it actually looks fine when a, a bean comes like this and goes over the top. So uh, I'm hoping to put these into you, good use in a couple of years. Yeah, that's the video for today. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.